Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the field of epigenetics. All right, let's jump in. So why do identical twins not look exactly identical? You'll notice that as identical twins, as they get older, they may become more different in their appearance. And this may be due to multiple things such as nature versus nurture and the different environment that they're in, but it is also partly due to epigenetics and differences in their epigenomes. So what is epigenetics? If we look at the word, Epi means above or on top of, and genetics just refers to genes. So the field of epigenetics is looking at um, things that are on top of genes, and this is because epigenetics doesn't actually change the DNA sequence, but rather alters its physical form, affecting how it is read. So if we think of the DNA, we can think of it as a text, and epigenetics is either highlighting the text so that it's read or crossing it out so that it's not read. So really epigenetics will modify the DNA with these chemical tags, essentially turning the genes on and off. And the chemical tags that alter your DNA expression, so DNA expression is what we call DNA being read and turned into proteins, and that's what we call your epigenome. And your epigenome is why the over 200 different cell types in your body, aka your brain cells or your skin cells or your liver cells, why they're all super different with different functions despite having the same exact DNA. Now let's talk about some popular examples of epigenetics in the body. So as I mentioned earlier, epi genetics can either turn genes on or off. And one of the really popular examples in our bodies of genes being turned off is by DNA methylation. And this is where a methyl group is added, which basically acts as a chemical cap, stopping the DNA from being read or expressed. So if we look at this figure here, the dark blue line is our DNA. And our DNA is wrapped around proteins called histones, so this light blue um, disc is a histone. And then we can see a methyl group is added here, and it basically stops the DNA from being accessible in that region. The other really popular example of genes being turned on or off is with histone modification. So as I mentioned just now, the DNA wraps around these histone proteins to make it more compact in the cell. And we can add different chemical tags to the histone, which will make the DNA either very tightly or very loosely wrap around the histone. And if it's very tightly wrapped around, then the DNA is less likely to be read. And then once it's made more loose, then it makes the DNA easier to read, and so it'll be more expressed in the body. And epigenetics is a really new and exciting field, and we're making lots of new discoveries, um, especially with things such as cancer and mental illness. And one of the recent examples of this was a study showed that with rats that had basically non-existent mothers or mothers who didn't tend to them, those baby rats actually had altered epigenomes. And so within these rats that were um, not nourished by their mothers, in these baby rats, the genes that helped them manage stress were actually turned off. And so this shows that potentially childhood trauma can cause epigenetic changes in our bodies. And then also new research has shown um, in mice and rats that these epigenetic changes can actually be passed on to future generations. So trauma in one generation can actually persist through generations. And so this has really important and exciting implications in the real world. 
That is it for today's video. I hope that you found it interesting. And to learn more about our bodies and our genomes or any other biological concept, please subscribe for more.